بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وهدى To proceed my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam I welcome you to this session where we are going through inshallah ta'ala a short treatise or text pertaining to the qualities that are needed for a believer to live this life as a Muslim and to of course prepare for the life of the hereafter which is the ultimate destination all of us are heading towards this book is known as منظومة السير منظومة في السير إلى الله والدار الآخرة أو منظومة السير إلى الله والدار الآخرة It's a short poem that consists of 18 lines and it highlights and outlines and mentions the most important qualities that a believer will need in his life to live this life as Allah Azza wa Jalla wants us to live and to prepare for the life of the hereafter These qualities are the qualities that every single one of us has to have and we have to aspire to have these and they are what makes the Muslim identify themselves as a Muslim they are the things that every one of us needs in order to have those characteristics our Prophet وسلم, mentions in various hadith our connection with Allah جل, how we uphold that connection uh, etiquettes when it comes to dealing with others how we carry ourselves in front of the public when we are alone and we are private and in seclusion how we should behave and how we live our lives according to how Islam wants us to live before we begin the book inshallah ta'ala we will speak of the life of Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Nasir al-Saudi rahimahullah who is the author of this book Shaykh Abdurrahman bin Nasir al-Saudi was born in the year 1307, the Hijri calendar, 1307. So this is around 1890. And he died in the year 1376, which coincides to 1956. So he's a very recent Shaykh that has lived this era. And he taught many of the Mashaykh that are alive today. And a lot, many of them have passed away, like Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen. Allah Azza wa gave the Sheikh an understanding, very deep, profound understanding of this deen. And Allah granted him the ability to explain complex issues of this deen in a very Allah Azza wa gave him an understanding of, of this deen and he authored many different books on different sciences from tafsir to usul al-fiqh, mustalah al-hadith, explanation of the verses in the Quran that uh, tell us about the rulings and the legislations of Islam from fasting and so on. And <coughs> his works are very simple and they can be understood by everyone that reads them. If they can speak Arabic, they will understand them. There is no ambiguities or anything that is difficult that needs further explanation. Um, he writes his books in a very short, simple, summarized manner. The book entails very important qualities that every one of us has to have. And these qualities, like we said, are qualities that the Muslims need to have in their daily lives. The mindset a Muslim should adopt when it comes to dealing with others how they live their life, their perspective of this world, the life of this world, their relationship with Allah Azza wa Jal, their relationship with others, and the believer should follow that same path when it comes to when they face difficulties, as well as the times where they are in a prosperous life, ease, comfort. And Allah Azza wa Jal mentions many of these qualities in the Quran, hence why the Shaykh brings them. Like he brings the most important inward and outward characteristics that the Muslim has to have when it comes to dealing with others as well as their connection with Allah. So from khawf, having hope in Allah Azza wa Jal, reliance on Allah, tawakkul, uh, having the fear of Allah Azza wa Jal, likewise loving Allah and so on. Many other qualities are mentioned in this book. So one should attain the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal. So the book, as you can tell by the name or the topic we're dealing with, is 
on the topic of Tizgitul Nafs, the purification of the soul and reforming our soul to make it a soul that is prepared to accept the Quran and the Sunnah and to, of course, implement that practically. The book is titled Asayr ila Allahi wa al Akhirah The Journey to Allah and the Life of the Hereafter. We all know that the destination of every single being is either hellfire or Jannah. So he talks about the things that will attain the person, the pleasure of Allah. Think that the things that the Muslim and the qualities and the attributes that every single Muslim has to have to, li to live a life of uh, barakah, full of barakah, a life that is aligned with the Quran and the Sunnah, a life that, of course, when difficulties come and afflictions and calamities befall that person, they can survive that and they don't give up and they don't uh, despair from the mercy of Allah. Likewise, he warns us of certain qualities that will lead to the path of destruction that will bring about the destruction of the servant. And all of these are mentioned in the lines. He first of all begins with Iman and al amal al-Salih. Al-Iman, having faith in Allah Azza wa Jal and amal al-Salih. Likewise, he talks about the journey that the soul will take, whether this is the spiritual journey that the Muslim needs to take towards Allah Azza wa Jal. Like Ibrahim alayhi salam said, وَقَالَ إِنِّي ذَاهِبٌ إِلَىٰ رَبِّي سَيَهْدِينَ this dhahab and this uh, journey that Ibrahim is talking about in the ayah is the journey of the heart. That he wants to transform his soul and make it a soul that accepts the wahi of Allah Azza wa Jal. That is in obedient in accordance with the Quran and the Sunnah. That stays away from anything that Allah Azza wa Jal is displeased with. You also have the journey of the soul, which is the journey that every one of us will take leaving this well and departing to the hereafter. He talks about that as well. So this journey entails both. It entails both of them and it contains the journey of the soul and the journey of the heart. The Shaykh Rahimullah Ta'ala also talk, talks about that Iman should be reflected on, uh, in the actions. Iman is not a mere claim that you say with your tongue or that you believe in your heart. Like it also consists of you showing that in your actions, your actions sh should manifest this Iman that you have in your heart. So if a person now comes and says that, I am a believer, I love Allah, I follow the Prophet وسلم, like I'm not going to pray. Then we say to that person, your Iman will be worthless. Why? Because you're missing the actions. If you really love Allah and you have faith in Him, then you have to follow the Wahi, the Quran and the Sunnah. Do as Allah Azza wa Jal tells you, fulfill the obligations, abstain from the haram and the things that Allah Azza wa Jal has prohibited. This will of course manifest in your actions. If another person comes and says that Iman is in my heart, then this is of course the aqidah of the murji'ah. Those that say Iman is in the heart and it resides there and it, is, it, has, no, it has no connection to the, to the actions. The Shaykh also talks about the abode of the hereafter, the life of the hereafter, and the Jannah and the, and the hellfire, and he gives a description of each one of them. And he gives a description of the qualities and the uh, things that will lead a person <coughs> to become from the inhabitants of Jannah, or similarly, the inhabitants of the hellfire. He also talks about a shukr, being grat grateful to Allah Azawajal, having that gratitude and showing Allah Azawajal appreciation for the ni'am and the blessings he has given us and he talks about the importance of knowledge and how the Muslim should adorn themselves with this Islamic knowledge and how a Muslim should always be in pursuit of that and traverse upon the paths that are needed to, uh, for someone to take and the avenues that a person has to take in order to get closer to Allah with that knowledge. So inshallah ta'ala we will begin with the recitation of the poem and explain each line 
and inshallah ta'ala mention the benefits that the shaykh mentions rahimahullah ta'ala bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim sa'id al-lazhi natajannabu subul ar-rada wa tayammamu limanazil ar-ridwani fahumu al-lazhi na akhlasu fi mashihim mutashari'ina bi shir'ati al-imani wahumu al-lazhi na bana wahumu al-lazhi na banu manazil sayrihim بين الرجاء والخوف للديان وهم الذين من الإله قلوبهم بوداده ومحبة الرحمن وهم الذين أكثر من ذكره في السر والإعلان والأحيان يتقربون إلى المليك بفعلهم طاعاته والترك للعصيان. so إن شاء الله تعالى we will explain the first six lines and then move on. And as we move on, inshallah ta'ala, we will read each one. So he mentions in the first line, سعيد الذين تجنبوا سبل الرداء The successful ones, the prosperous Muslims, those that are victorious and that have become successful, are those تجنبوا سبل الرداء that abstain from the paths that lead to destruction. So he mentions سبل الرداء here, meaning that the paths and the avenues and the ways and the, the any path that leads to the destruction of the servant. And this sa'ada comes from the ayah where Allah Azza wa mentions people will be of two categories on the day of judgment. فَمِنْهُمْ شَقِيٌّ وَسَعِيد From them, i.e. the humans and the jinn, are shaqiyun, the wretched ones, and their destination is the hellfire, and sa'id, the successful one, or the prosperous one, meaning the one that has attained the sa'ada. And this sa'ada can only be attained by way of following the Qur'an and complying and conforming to that which is in the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet And this is why the Prophet was sent with this wahi. So subul al-rada is anything or any action or any statement or any belief that leads to the destruction of the servant. So they abstain from that. وَتَيَمَّمُوا لِمَنَازِلِ الرِّضْوَانِ And they intend the stations of pleasure, to attain the pleasure of Allah, they intend that. So تَيَمَّمُوا comes from تَيَمُّمْ. What is تَيَمُّمْ? تَيَمُّمْ. Anyone? Dry ablution, yes. When you have no water or you have a very small amount of water and you need that to survive, then you are allowed to make تَيَمُّمْ. So tayammam, the meaning of tayammam is al-qasdu. It is to intend to raise or elevate yourself from the raf'ul hadith, from the, the impurity, whether it's ritual impurity or the, the, the minor impurity. And then salah becomes uh, halal for you. You can pray with that as long as you do not have water. If you then find that water, then of course you have to make wudu. So tayammamu, لِمَنَازِلِ الرِّضْوَانِ It means that the person intends and they hope and they uh, have that intention and they aspire to reach the station. So he mentions manazil, stations. When we are taking the bus from one destination to the other, of course we're going to a destination. This is the first point and you're going towards your home, for example, or workplace. You have to take the bus from where? From a station. So the path that you take and all of the steps in between or the stops in between, they lead you to what? They lead you to your destination. This is why he mentions that they intend the stations, i.e. wait, uh, in other words, wait for that bus to take you to where you want. So similarly, you wait and you intend the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal by taking the, the qualities or adorning yourselves with the qualities that will lead to this destination. So this means, of course, ibadah, types of ibadah, ikhlas, uh, tawakkul, al-mahabba, al-raja, al-khawf, reliance on Allah Azza loving Allah, uh, fearing Allah, all of that can be considered to be the manazil and the stations of the the stations that will attain you the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jalla. 
فَهُمُ الَّذِينَ أَخْلَصُوا فِي مَشِيهِمْ So he mentions the first quality that is needed for a person that is looking for this salvation. The person that is looking for that uh, pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal. He mentions Al-Ikhlas first. They traverse this path في مشيهم in their journey متشرعين بشرعة الإيمان whilst following the Iman that the Prophet sallallahu came with i.e. the mutaba imani so this means that the Muslim has to have two qualities in order for their ibadah to be accepted you have to have two qualities and if you're missing one of them or you're missing both of them your ibadah will be invalid whether it's the ibadah to badaniya the outward actions or the deeds that we do with our limbs or the ibadah of the heart meaning the actions of the heart, like the things that only Allah knows. It's between you and Allah. Believe in Allah Azza wa Jal. No one can tell whether you're a disbeliever or a believer if you're praying with the Muslims. Hence why the Prophet وسلم, the munafiqun, the hypocrites that were plotting against Islam and that were harming Islam, they used to pray with him in the same masjid. He knew because Allah Azza wa Jal had told him, Hudayfa had a list, Hudayfa bin Yaman had a list of the munafiqin, the hypocrites, their names, their jobs, what they do. Lakin the Prophet ﷺ judged them according to their outer appearance and their outer, uh, how, how they behaved and the fact that they were praying with the Muslims. So he gave them that ruling in this dunya. However, in the hereafter, Allah tells us, in al fi al asfali min al nar. This is just an example. So the deeds of the heart or the actions of the heart, it is between you and Allah. No one else knows. So whether you believe in Allah جل, whether you have hope in Allah, whether you are hopeful of the, for the mercy of Allah جل, whether you have tawakkul and reliance on Allah, whether your iman is high or da'if, only Allah knows. مُتَشَرِّعِينَ بِشِرْعَةِ الْإِيمَانِ So al-ikhlas, it means, ikhlas means تَصْفِيَةُ الْقَلْبِ مِنْ إِرَادَةِ الْغَيْرِ it is to cleanse your heart from wanting other than Allah when you're worshipping Allah Azza wa Anything that is considered to be worship, salah, fasting, reading Quran, uh, teaching, dhikr, whatever, you name it, Allah Azza wa wants you to do it for his sake. And you have to do it sincerely for him. You do not give any share of it like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi tells us, أَخْوَفُ مَا أَخَافُ عَلَيْكُمُ الشِّرْكُ الْأَصْغَرُ that you don't share any of that with other beings. Nowadays we have a problem, and that problem of course all of us are probably affected by it in one way or another, and that is the, the presence of social media makes it difficult for a person to worship Allah with pure ikhlas, with pure sincerity. Why? Because everywhere we go, you have people taking selfies of their ibadah, worshiping Allah, people recording themselves, reading Quran, praying salah, and making tawaf around the Kaaba and so on. So the Muslim should always keep his good deeds a secret between him and Allah and not show it to others. If they are apparent like Salah and you have to come to the Jama'ah of course, then there's no problem in that. Like in anything else that must be between you and Allah, keep it between you and Allah. And that's when you feel that there'll be more barakah in your ibadah. You will taste the sweetness of that ibadah. So al-ikhlas is tasfiyatul al qalbi min iradati al-ghayr and the second one is mutaba'atul nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam following the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam so one is to do with the intention who are you intending what are you intending who are you doing it for and the other is to do with how you do it according to the way of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam because if we say that Anyone can worship Allah however they want. As long as they intend Allah, everyone will come up with their own version of ibadah, own form of ibadah. The quantity will probably be different. How we do it will be different. What time we do it will be different. The places we do it will be different. And all of that will, of course, take it out of the fold. That particular ibadah, these things will cause it to be taken out of the fold of ibadah. And it becomes now what? Bid'a, an innovation, something that's been introduced after the Prophet ﷺ passed away. 
وهم الذين بنوا منازل سيرهم and they are those who build their stations منازل سيرهم the stations that they use to travel to Allah Azza wa Jal they use these stations بنوا منازل سيرهم and they build it meaning that they fortify the things or they make it stronger make it solid the things that they need in order to take that journey Allah Azza wa Jal tells us in the Quran when a person the best type of journey is the journey to Allah journey of the heart and he says وَتَزَوَّدُ فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ الزَّادِ التَّقْوَى take provision when you're going or undertaking that journey and the best type of provision that a person can take is taqwa so what is taqwa? taqwa like the scholars mention is a very comprehensive term and it means that it is أن تعمل بطاعة الله like Talq ibn Habib from the Tabi'in said أن تعمل بطاعة الله that you do you fulfill your ibadah and you perform that particular action الله, with obedience to Allah i.e. you have now accepted that this is a must I have to do it it doesn't necessarily have to be wajib it can also be sunnah you're doing it because you're obeying Allah Allah has either commanded you by way of obligation or recommended voluntarily you're doing it you don't have to like you're doing it because you want that reward and you're doing it in order to obey Allah Azza wa Jal ala nurin min Allah upon a light from Allah so this light as the scholars mention is the mutaba'atun Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam following the footsteps of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an ta'mal bi'ta'ati Allah ala nurin min Allah raja'a thawab Allah and then you're hoping with that the reward from Allah Azza wa Jal you're hoping for the reward from Allah you're doing it for Allah alone. Wa anta truka ma'asiyat Allah. And that you leave off sinning. Leave off, abstain from anything that can cause the anger of Allah. Ala nuri min Allah. Upon a light from Allah. I.e. you have to have the delil that this is uh, something that's not permitted. Because if we say that whatever we do, uh, we think it doesn't look good and it becomes haram then that's not allowed in Islam. And Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَلَا تَقُولُوا لِمَا تَصِفُ أَلْسِنَتُكُمُ الْكَذِبَةِ هَذَا حَلَالٌ وَهَذَا حَرَامٌ It is not allowed for a person to pass a judgment and say this is halal or haram unless they have the evidence for it and they're 100% sure. So what now the scholars mention is a principle that all of the actions that we do are permitted unless al-asl and the basic principle and by default the interactions that we have, the actions that we do, anything that is considered to be a norm and a customary practice, anything that's not considered to be ibadah, you're allowed to do it. As long as you know that, uh, of course, there is nothing that says you cannot do it. However, when it comes to ibadah, al-asl fihi adamul mashru'iyah, meaning that the, by default, you cannot pray unless you have the evidence for it. So you have to have the evidence for it in order to do the ibadah and all of it is tawqifiyya it is not allowed for you to worship Allah because you think you can no you have to have the delil for that and then he says rahimahullah ta'ala so uh, the definition of taqwa as we said is wa anta turka ma'asiyat Allah ala nurin min Allah khifat adab Allah that you fear Allah azza wa jalla the punishment of Allah and this is taqwa Taqwa is something very comprehensive that all of these deeds and qualities lead to it. Um, it is something which Allah Azza wa loves, which is why He said, وَتَزَوَّدُوا فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ الزَّادِ التَّقْوَى Take provision for this journey, and the best provision that a person can take is a taqwa. And here, Rahimullah then says, وَهُمُ الَّذِينَ بَنُوا مَنَازِلَ سَيْرِهِمْ They are those who build their stations okay they build their stations whilst they are in between two things they're between two things being fearful of Allah 
والخوف and uh, having fear of Allah Azawajal and being hopeful for his mercy they hope for the mercy of Allah that Allah Azawajal will grant them his mercy but they also fear his punishment and this is how the Muslim should be in between these two states if one of them overpowers the other or one of them takes more precedence to the other in the heart then that Muslim or that person is in danger of being destroyed why? because if a person is too hopeful very optimistic they hope for the mercy of Allah then that leads them to what? Al-amnu min makrillah being safe from the punishment of Allah and Allah Azawajal mentions that in the Quran that it is dangerous for a person to worship him with too much hope that they have no fear because that person will commit sins they will oppress others they will do all sorts of things that will take them away further away from Allah and this will lead them to Al-Amnu min makrillah فَلَا يَأْمَنُ مَكْرَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الْخَاسِرُونَ and no one is saved from the punishment of Allah except those that who are lost they are lost i.e. they will be destroyed and the Prophet ﷺ warned us against that a person hoping having too much hope in Allah and they don't do anything they don't come with the means to draw closer to Allah the second one is al khawf having too much fear as well can make a person despair from the mercy of Allah إِنَّهُ لَا يَأَسُ مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الْكَافِرُونَ Allah says none despairs from my mercy except the disbelievers so they come hand in hand they come together they have to be balanced and the scholars mention them to be uh, a bird with two wings okay a bird with two wings so a person should always be in between these two states you fear the punishment of Allah and that leads you to stay away from the muharramat the prohibitions and the things that Allah has forbidden but also you have to have hope in Allah that Allah Azawajal will accept your good deeds that he will forgive you that he will give you what you want in life being optimistic is something which is mentioned in our sharia and the prophet sallallahu was like that having husn al dhan billah having good assumptions and good uh, uh, you know being having that mindset and assuming good of allah azawajal and allah azawajal mentions ana inda dhan abdi bi i am as my servant thinks of me if they think good of me i will give them that good if they always you know they have that negative mindset and they say Allah is going to punish me you know I fear something will happen to me I am going to lose my job then that will happen to them why because then Allah becomes insignificant in your heart if you do that and that will come as a punishment for you Allah mentions that we have to have hope in Allah and this is how the Sahaba were how this is how the prophets were فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلَ الصَّالِحَ Allah Azawajal mentions that whoever hopes to meet Allah the meeting with Allah will require a, a good deeds and iman فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلَ صَالِحًا you have to do the good deeds work for the hereafter uh, strive hard put the effort in don't wait and sit there and say things will come to me وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا and likewise be sincere in your worship do not give any share of it to others so this is how the Muslim should be if you look at this book and you concentrate and subhanallah reflect on them if we really contemplated and pondered over the different lines the, uh, of this poem you'd think that if we stick to these follow them the way they are and implement them in our lives there'd be no problems all of these mental issues and anxiety and you know people having uh, negative uh, thoughts of Allah Azza wa the, that leads to depression all of that comes from Adamul Iman or Iman not being uh, complete a person's Iman is deficient when they have these thoughts they come from Shaitan and he will tell us how to get rid of these inshallah ta'ala and they are those that Allah Azza wa Jal has filled their hearts with وَهُمُ الَّذِينَ مَلَ الْإِلَاهُ قُلُوبَهُمْ بِوِدَادِهِ وَمَحَبَّةِ الرَّحْمَانِ with his love he filled their hearts with his love so this is a ni'mah that Allah gives to those servants he, he, he wants and having 
uh, loving Allah Azza wa Jal requires actions. Loving the prophets requires actions. It's not a mere claim. It's not something you can claim. So these three qualities are mentioned and they're three stations that the person will depart from when they are taking that journey. Al-Khawf, being fearful of Allah. Al-Raja, having hope in Allah, hoping for the mercy of Allah. And Al-Mahabba, loving Allah Azza wa This is how we worship Allah Azza wa With hope, with fear, and loving Allah Azza wa Because he had told us to do this, we're fulfilling it. We are now implementing and actualizing what Allah Azza has commanded us in the Quran. And these three qualities are very important. And the scholars mention, the scholars of the Sahaba, the Tabi'een and the Salaf, they say, من خاف شيئاً فر إليه When it comes to the fear of Allah. The fear of Allah. من خاف شيئاً فر منه ومن خاف الله فر إليه Whoever fears something, the, you know, the natural fear, if you fear something, you run away from it, you flee from it, correct? Like him, whoever fears Allah, they run to Allah. They flee back to Allah. And the delil for that from the Quran is what? An ayah in the Quran mentions that. Uh, Allah, Flee to Allah. So this khawf that you have of Allah, جل, the fear that you have of Allah, the punishment that you fear, it makes you flee to Allah. I.e., you seek refuge in Allah from this punishment, from this torment, from the... Uh, the um, Hellfire, when it's described in the Quran, فَفِرُّوا إِلَى اللَّهِ إِنِّي لَكُمْ مِنْهُ نَذِيرٌ مُبِينٌ The scholars also mention that whoever worships Allah with fear alone, what happens to that person? They say, whoever fears Allah Azza wa Jal or worships Allah with fear, they are a haruri. This person has now uh, taken the path or is imitating the Khawarij. The Khawarij are those that, you know, will take a person out of the fold of Islam and judge that person and label them a disbeliever because of a sin they have committed. So they had too much fear and that led them to adopting that mindset. Now they describe you or they label you as a disbeliever if you lie, if you drink alcohol, if you uh, smoke a cigarette, if you um, cheat, if you do even the minor sins. You've left the fold of Islam. So they say, من خاف الله من عبد الله على خوف فهو حروري. Likewise, on the other side, on the contrary, they say, ومن عبد الله على رجاء فقط فهو مرجئي. Whoever worships Allah with hope only. I.e. they hope for the mercy of Allah and they don't do any actions. They do not do any, you know, work. They don't come with the effort that's required of them to worship Allah. This person has now taken the mindset and the aqeedah and the belief of the murji'a. Murji'a, those that say nothing harms the iman. As long as you love Allah in your heart and you are a believer and you say la ilaha illallah, if you don't pray, don't fast, uh, don't read Quran, don't pay zakah, you don't go hajj, nothing harms that iman. And iman will always remain at that level. Your iman will never become deficient. It will never go down or decrease. This is what they say. Like in the Muslim is in between these two. Al-Khawf, Al-Raja, coupled with Mahabba, loving Allah Azza wa Jal. Bain Al-Raja wa Al-Khawfi, Lid-Dayyani, Aida. Hakim, the Dayan, Allah Azza wa Jal is the one that judges. وَهُمُ الَّذِينَ مَلَ الْإِلَاهُ قُلُوبَهُمْ And they are those that Allah Azza wa Jal has filled their hearts with بِوِدَادِهِ وَمَحَبَّةِ الرَّحْمَانِ With devotion. They love Allah Azza wa Jal and they love Him and they worship Him with devotion. I.e. submit to Him willingly. Surrender to, to Him. Give up all of their you know, uh, the things they have and their desires and uh, whatever the soul loves, they leave that for the sake of Allah and they love and they give precedence to what Allah Azza loves. Which is why Allah Azza mentions regarding the love of our Prophet and the love of Allah. قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ 
فَاتَّبِعُونِي Say to them if you truly love Allah, O Muhammad, فَاتَّبِعُونِي Then follow me. يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ Allah Azza wa Jal, as a result of that, will love you. Will give you something which is even bigger and he'll love you. وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبُكُمْ So the Muslims in between these three qualities, you always have to have that mindset. Like you're worshipping Allah with khawf and raja and mahabba. بِوِدَادِهِ وَمَحَبَّةِ الرَّحْمَنِ وَهُمُ الَّذِينَ أَكْثَرُوا مِنْ ذِكْرِهِ And they are those that abundantly remember Allah. They always remember Allah. Making mention of His name. Uh, reading His Qur'an. Uh, mentioning the ahadith of the Prophet ﷺ. Sitting in hilaq al-dhikr like we are now. And I give you the good news that our Prophet ﷺ says in a hadith that when a group of people assemble in one of the houses of Allah, like we are now, we ask Allah Azawajal to give us this, uh, reward for that They get four things As a reward to them Number one is that وَمَجْتَمَعَ قَوْمٌ فِي بَيْتِ مِنْ بُيُوتِ اللَّهِ يَتْلُونَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ وَتَدَارَسُونَهُ فِي مَا بَيْنَهُمْ إِلَّا نَزَلَتْ عَلَيْهُمُ السَّكِينَةِ Tranquility descends upon them i.e. the angels guard them They are in a comfortable zone They are in a place full of baraka And they feel that in their hearts which is why the Prophet ﷺ said in another hadith to clarify this or to emphasize on this point إِذَا مَرَرْتُمْ بِرِيَاضِ الْجَنَّةِ فَارْتَعُوا If you go past a garden from the gardens of Jannah If you go past a garden from the gardens of Jannah i.e. حِلَقُ dhikr, Then sit down and benefit from it i.e. listen to what's being said So this brings about the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal and the love of Allah and the second thing they get is that وَمَجْتَمَعَ قَوْمٌ فِي بَيْتِ مِنْ بُيُوتِ اللَّهِ يَتْلُونَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ وَيَتَدَارَسُونَهُ فِي مَا بِنْهُمْ إِلَّا نَزَلَتْ عَلِيْهُمْ سَكِينَةِ وَغَشِيَتْهُمُ الرَّحْمَةِ Mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal The mercy of Allah engulfs them It envelopes them They are in a very tranquil place The house of Allah Azza wa Jal Yes, DN13 LJK, that's a silver Toyota. If you can please move that, and it's uh, blocking this brother's car. Yeah. So this is how the Muslim should live, and this is the mindset you have to adopt as a Muslim. And that leads you to the path that Allah Azawajal wants you to be on, which is to live according to how Allah Azawajal wants you to live and you of course have to do your utmost best and you have to come with the effort and strive hard you don't sit back and say everything will be fine I have that belief I uh, pray my salah I stick to the minimum I uh, read uh, you know a portion of the Quran a day like you take the extra steps in order to attain that love of Allah Azawajal so Allah uh, the author rahimahullah says وَهُمُ الَّذِينَ أَكْثَرُوا مِنْ ذِكْرِهِ And they are those that increase in the remembrance of Allah. أَكْثَرُوا مِنْ ذِكْرِهِ Abundantly they remember Allah. Wherever they are. Which is why Allah Azza wa Jalla said, يَا أَيُّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا ذُكُرُوا اللَّهَ ذِكْرًا كَثِيرًا And the scholars, when they explain this ayah, they say that there is no other worship, any, no other type of worship that has been attached to a number, to a certain number. Allah did not say, pray X number of Salah, fast X number of uh, f uh, you know days, fast or read Quran, one juz, two juz, three juz a day. Like in when it comes to the dhikr, he just tells us when it comes to the normal ibadat to fulfill it the way it should be fulfilled. I.e., you do it the way it should be done. When it comes to the dhikr of Allah, remembering Allah and making mention of His name, He says, do it a lot, maximize it, do it plentiful. أُذْكُرُ اللَّهَ ذِكْرًا كَثِيرًا A lot. This has no limit. You do as much as you can. The more you remember Allah Azza wa Jal, the more He will remember you. وَمَنْ ذَكَرَ اللَّهَ فِي مَلَئٍ ذَكَرَهُ فِي مَلَئٍ خَيْرٍ فِي مَلَئٍ خَيْرٌ مِّنْهِ Whoever remembers Allah Azza wa Jal by themselves, Allah will make mention of their names. And whoever remembers Allah in an uh, assembly, a gathering, Allah will remember them and mention their name in a gathering which is better than that, i.e. with the angels. 
the honorable angels will hear your name being mentioned. So and so was mentioning the name of Allah. Um, of course, this dhikr is something which is needed. It's the ghada or roh. It is the nourishment of the soul that every Muslim has to have. The day you remember Allah Azza wa Jalla, you read your adhkar in the morning, you read a portion of the Quran. It's not the same day as when you don't read it. You feel that something is missing from you. There is something, a void or a gap in your heart that needs filling in. You don't fill it with anything else except the, except to the dhikr of Allah. So the dhikr of Allah is something, uh, subhanallah, that only Allah knows how important it is. The Prophet sallallahu in a hadith mentions that, Ala unabbi'ukum bi a'malikum. Shall I not tell you of the best of your deeds? Wa azgaha inda malikikum. Now look, he's trying to uh, gain their attention. He's trying to drag their attention and he mentions certain things that make it the most important, the most valuable, the most precious deed that a person can do. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he says, the best of your deeds, the most pure with your Lord in the sight of Allah, they're the purest of deeds. And they are the highest in ranks, in stations, the highest, i.e. it is a level that no, no other ibadah can reach. And they said, Bala ya Rasulullah, yes, O Messenger of Allah, why not? They would always want and they would uh, hasten to hear this from the Prophet wasallam, which is why they preferred that a Arabi or a Bedouin comes to the Prophet and he asks him questions and that the Prophet وسلم, answers that person and they benefit from the answers. Okay? He said to them, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, before that, he said to them, he mentioned another good quality, another merit for that ibadah. And he said, وَخَيْرٍ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَن تُنْفِقُوا ذَهَبًا أَوْ فِضَّةً And it is better for you to give dhahab gold and silver as a charity this is better for you than that and it is better you meet your enemies in the battlefield and you strike their necks and they strike your necks i.e they fight you and you fight them and you suffer casualties and you cause them injury i.e you uh, have the upper hand they said, Bala ya Rasulullah. So, so what is this? What is he going to mention now? They're thinking. He said, Dhikrullah. The remembrance of Allah is better than all of these things that we have mentioned. So that's how much a person needs the dhikr of Allah. A person needs to remember Allah often. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa akbar, astaghfirullah, la hawla wa la ghuti illa billah. All of these types of dhikr will get you closer to Allah Azza wa Jalla. They will attain, uh, allow you to attain that level of closeness. And you draw closer to Allah with that. The adhkar that you read in the morning, never leave it. The Quran that you recite, the adhkar of the evening that you read, saying, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, al baqiyatu salihat these are the never-ending uh, types of dhikr that Allah loves the most. So the Muslim should make a daily portion of their time or dedicate certain time to the dhikr of Allah. Like it becomes difficult sometimes living, you know, in the midst of uh, this environment and uh, subhanAllah juggling between work and uh, your classes and home and being busy with friends and socializing and all of that makes it difficult sometimes. You forget about it. Like in the minimum you should do is read the, the morning adhkar and the evening adhkar and before you go to sleep. With that, you attain the protection that Allah gives you. We need that protection. A lot of the illnesses, like we said, the mental illnesses that uh, many people have are as a result of not remembering Allah. Or, in fact, I should say, they lead to that. They lead to mental illnesses, being in a state of uh, you know anxiety and being anxious and uh, always worrying about the future and thinking that you have no chance of uh, living a 
good life or you go through difficulty, financial difficulties and things are not falling in place, everything works against you, all of that are as a result of abandoning the dhikr of Allah. And the delil for that is وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَكَّةً Dhikr here is mentioned, remember. Whoever أعرض عَنْ ذِكْرِي Whoever stays away or does not remember me, Allah Azza wa Jalla says. Or whoever turns away from my remembrance, i.e. the Qur'an, the dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jalla in general, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, the adhkar in the morning and the evening. فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ Allah Azza wa Jal will make them live a miserable life. Life full of difficulties and hardship and things not working and this person is always trying. Lakin, there is something going against them. It is like this person is being fought by unseen creation of Allah Azza wa Jal. They're always losing something. They're not in the best state of mind. They're worried. They are full of worries, their life, you know, where they live, family problems. That is because the, this person does not remember Allah. And of course, the consequences for that is mentioned in the following ayah. This person will come blind in the day of judgment. The one that turns completely, turns away from the remembrance of Allah, i.e. the disbeliever. But it can also be a Muslim that turns away from the remembrance of Allah. Even though they call themselves Muslim, lakin, in the sight of Allah, you know, they're just Muslim by name or, you know, because of the culture or the family or the being from, you know, Muslims. In, uh, by name or by tradition or culture. So he says, They remember Allah a lot. In private. They remember Allah Azza wa Jal. A person should have a specific ibadah that is exclusive to him alone. In seclusion, they worship Allah. That is between them and Allah. And they don't tell anyone about it. Okay, this is when you really feel that your iman has grown and it has developed and you have attained the sweetness of that iman. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us to do that. He says that whoever wishes to sway, uh, to taste the sweetness of Iman, they should have certain qualities. And these qualities is that that you love Allah and His Messenger above everything else. You love them. They are a priority for you. If your thoughts and desires and you know temptations come to your mind and then you remember the word of Allah or the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, telling you that this is haram you should not do which one do you prioritize which one should you give precedence to which one should you uh, take sacrifice for the word of Allah so this is how a person now has to have that ibadah because that ibadah living off that sin is a ibadah even though no one else sees you in your private life you are in seclusion, no one else sees you, it's only Allah sees you. If you leave that, it's a very, very enormous, uh, valuable, uh, precious, I should say, very important ibadah that will attain you to get closer to Allah. Azza wa and Allah Azza wa will make others love you when you leave something for His sake, others' hearts will be full of love for that person. As for the one that falls into this, the traps of shaitan and they are dragged into that sin and they you know, have no limits when they are by themselves and they commit sins Allah Azza wa will fill the hearts of others with hate for that person they will dislike that person they will not feel comfortable speaking to that person we're talking about a person of Iman, not everyone okay so a person might be sociable you know they have many friends and they like in the ones that we're talking about or the friends or the, uh, you know, those people that you have connection with are the ones that are closer to Allah Azza wa Jal. Which is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned in hadith that if Allah is displeased with someone, He speaks to the angels 
and he says hate that person and they hate that person and then that angel will tell others that sorry Jibreel will tell uh, the other angels to hate that person and the opposite is true when Allah Azawajal loves someone he says to Jibreel Jibreel love this person I love him and he then speaks Jibreel speaks to the others the other angels and he tells them to love that person and then Allah Azawajal places acceptance in the hearts of the human beings for that person everyone loves him why? Because he's a person that Allah loves. And Allah Azza wa Jal says in a hadith, a hadith al-Qudsi, Man aada li waliyan faqad aadantuhu bilharb. This person now becomes a wali, a close friend of Allah. Someone that Allah Azza wa Jal loves so much that they become a very close person to Allah. And Allah has declared war on anyone that harms this person. Faqad aadantuhu bilharb. And then he mentions how we can attain the love of Allah Azza wa Jal. He says, وَمَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبَّ إِلَيْهِ مِمَّا افْتَرَضْتُهُ عَلَيْهِ وَمَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي My servant does not draw closer to me with anything more beloved to me than what? Than the things that I made obligatory upon them. The ibadat, the obligations. The things that Allah Azza wa Jal says you have to do with them, you have to fulfill. These things bring, bring about when you fulfill them, the love of Allah. And he then says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in this Hadith Al-Qudsi, Hadith Al-Qudsi is a Hadith which the Prophet relates from Allah. It's not Quran, lakin it is the wording is the wording of Allah Azza wa Jal, lakin the Prophet is relating it. And he then says, وَمَا وَلَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بالنوافل. My servant does not cease to draw closer to me with the nawafil, with the voluntary acts of worship. Voluntary acts of worship. Things that you do, but they're not wajib. I.e. the sunnah prayer. For example, giving sadaqah, and doing a lot of dhikr, helping others. Anything that is not wajib is nafil. Anything that's not fard, Maybe I'm confusing you, um, you studied the Hanafi fiqh. There is a difference between fard and wajib and so on. Anyway, anything that is not obligatory is known as nafil. It can also be sunnah. طيب? Something which Allah Azawajal loves, like it's not obligation. You don't have to do it. Allah Azawajal says that this is what they draw closer to me with. As long as they do it, they are drawing closer to me. They are bringing... They are attaining my love more and more. And he then says, والإعلاني, They are those that remember Allah publicly. They remember Allah Azawajal publicly, i.e. in their gatherings. And this is why our Prophet says that any gathering that is uh, void of the remembrance of Allah will have no barakah. Any gathering where Allah's name is not mentioned will have no barakah. This is why a person should always remember Allah Azza wa Jal. Even just by saying, uh, you know, Alhamdulillah, wa salatu salam ala Rasulillah, or mentioning the name of Allah, or quoting an from the Quran. Yeah. What, uh, and then he says, Wal ahyani. And they remember Allah continuously, at all times. At all times. And this is how the Muslim should be. يتقربون إلى الملك بفعلهم طاعاته والترك للعصيان. They seek to draw closer to Allah Azza wa Jal بفعله بفعلهم with their actions. So these actions can be the actions of the heart or the actions of the limbs. طاعاته والترك للعصيان by being obedient to Allah Azza wa Jal and staying away from the sinful actions. So taqwa is what? It is to do the good that Allah Azza wa Jal had commanded you to do as Allah Azza wa Jal had commanded you to do, perform the obligations and stay away from the muharramat. This is the essence of taqwa. So these will attain and they will seek to draw close to Allah Azza wa Jal by fulfilling the obligations and stay away from the muharramat from the Muharramat. Um, 
he, he mentions two things here leaving off sinning and uh, fulfilling the obligations and performing the good deeds and then he says sabr al nufusa sorry fi'l al fara'id wal nawafil da'buhum ma'a ru'yat al taqsir wal nuqsan line number 7 fi'l al fara'id wal nawafil da'buhum doing the obligatory actions and the optional actions optional actions the voluntary types of ibadat is there da'b and that means the way the norm uh, how they always act their mindset this is something they do at all times da'buhum but with that, they see themselves as, def as deficient. As you know, people that have not reached the level they should have reached in their ibadah. And this is from their tawadu. And they are always observing and analyzing their faults. And you know, they think they have fallen short of the... Uh, level they should require or the standard the ibadah should be at and they think you know they have that deficiency all the time when the eye of Allah Azza wa was revealed Allah Azza wa Jal revealed an ayah and Aisha had this ayah being recited by the Prophet sallallahu Those that when they give what Allah has given them, when they give from that and they pay charity for the sake of Allah. And their hearts are fearful. They're giving, but their hearts are fearful. How does that work? Doesn't, person, doesn't the person become happy when they're doing something good? And they think they're doing and mashallah and praying salah and shaitan brings that thoughts to your mind, right? Alhamdulillah, I'm doing something while others are outside doing haram and worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal. Lakin Allah mentions the opposite. They are giving sadaqah, but at the same time they are fearful. And Aisha asked how, O Messenger of Allah, how is that possible? And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, uh, said to her, she said, وَقُلُوبُهُمْ وَجِّلَةٌ أَنَّهُمْ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ رَاجِعُونَ She said, are they those that commit zina? Are they those that drink alcohol? Are they those that, you know, do other types of deeds? Those that are treacherous to the Muslims and deceive when they buy and sell and so on? He said, no, Aisha, they are not. They are those that worship Allah Azza wa Jal, but they fear that their worship might not be accepted by Allah. It might not be accepted by Allah. So having that fear, this is what the Shaykh mentions. مَعَ رُؤْيَةِ التَّقْصِيرِ وَالنُّقْصَانِ and Allah Azza wa Jalla mentions, إِنَّمَا يَتْقَبَّلُ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْمُتَّقِينَ Allah only accepts from the muttaqeen. So each line of this poem is taken from the Qur'an or the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Okay, so we've mentioned that صَبَرُ النُّفُوسَ عَلَى الْمَكَارِ كُلِّهَا شَوْقًا إِلَى مَا فِيهِ مِنْ إِحْسَانِ they have kept themselves patient upon all of that a person enjoys for the sake of Allah. All of the difficulties and the hardships and you know the things that a person finds it difficult to deal with in this life. They kept themselves patient upon this ibadah, upon the way of Allah. And they do that with love, with muhabba and with khawf. Kulliha shawqan ila ma fihi min ihsani. Why are they doing that? They're enjoying these problems. They are, you know, uh, waking up in the middle of the night. Maybe they don't have hot water. Maybe they, uh, uh, you know, make wudu with cold water. Maybe they uh, do not get good sleep. Maybe they fast long days. Maybe they read a lot of Quran that no one knows. Maybe they give a lot of charity to the poor and the orphans and the widows and anyone that needs it from the Muslims. Or they might do other acts of worship that only Allah knows. It's between them and Allah. How, why are they doing all of that? Shawqan ila ma fihi min ihsani. They are desiring that which is with Allah, i.e. the Jannah. That's mentioned. 
shawqan ila ma fihi min ihsani and also the fact that it will lead to ihsan if a person wants to become a muhsin a person that has reached the, the status or the level of piety then that person has to come with what it requires i.e you worship Allah as though he sees you and if you can't worship if you don't see Allah Azawajal, he sees you this is the highest level of iman شَوْقٍ إِلَى مَا فِيهِ مِنْ إِحْسَانِي and he then says رحمه الله نزلوا بمنزلة الرضا فهموا بها قد أصبحوا في جنة وأماني they have arrived so this journey they've taken from that particular stop or that specific you know stop or station they are now have arrived at their destination نزلوا بمنزلة الرضا so this destination of the الرضا the contentment they have arrived at all of the other deeds Fear, being fearful of Allah Azza wa Jal, ikhlas, following the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi hoping for the mercy of Allah, loving Allah Azza wa Jal, giving up all of your desires for the sake of Allah, all of these lead to what? a riba And riba is the highest level of uh, gratitude or showing your appreciation to Allah Azza wa Jal, or being pleased with that which Allah has chosen for you. They have arrived at the station of contentment. And with that, with it, they have ultimately attained the Jannah in the hereafter. وأماني, and safety in this world. So, this safety and the security that a person needs comes from worshipping Allah. Worshipping Allah. This is when a person is now safe. And what does Allah say in the Quran that Man Amila Salih Min Zakirin Untha Wala Uhua Mu'minun Fala Nuhi Yinahu Hayatan Tayyiba. Whoever worships Allah Azawajal whilst being a believer and they come with the good deeds. Min Zakirin Untha, whether male or female, Fala Nuhi Yinahu Hayatan Tayyiba. Allah Azawajal says we will definitely make that person live. A goodly life. This goodly life is a life full of security. So this security comes from what? From the tawheed of Allah. Purifying your deeds for the sake of Allah. Following the Prophet ﷺ. Doing the good deeds and following the footsteps of the Prophet ﷺ. And then continuing like that. Until you ultimately reach your destination which is Jannah. Like in this world before that Jannah. You live in a minor Jannah. A Jannah that is of a less yani, status, i.e. what you feel in your heart. And this is why a lot of the Salaf would say that لو علم الملوك وابناء الملوك لما نحن فيه من نعيم لجادلون عليه بالسيوف That if the kings of this world and the children of the kings knew that ni'mah, that uh, blissful life, that goodly life, that uh, tranquility that we have in our hearts and that, of course, is a result of the Iman and the good deeds that a person performs. They would have fought with us with their swords. They would have fought with us with their swords and try and take that away from us. Again, it's not something they can take away. It's not tangible. It's not something you can see. It's not something that you can feel or touch. Like if they knew that and they had that, even though be, you know they have the, subhanAllah, the, the dominion of um, certain parts of you know, this world, and Allah Azawajal has given them a share of his kingdom, and they control a particular country or a city or a place, they would not have felt, and they will never ever feel how the Muslim feels when they worship Allah, and they're content, they've reached the manzilatul riba, the state, or the level and the station of contentment. That is better than all of the things they have. From the delights of this world, the materialism, you know, the wealth and children and wives and so on. All of that is insignificant in the sight of Allah. And the ni'mah that Allah Azawajal gives to his servant is that safety and security. They feel safe. They have that security. Nothing harms them. Even if all of the you know powers of the world come together, they don't see that as something. They think they think that this is something insignificant. The power of Allah is all the punishment of Allah is more severe than these. 
you know, these servants cannot do anything to me if Allah Azza wa Jal had not ordained that and he had not decreed that. So the believer has that mindset. And with that mindset, they live a goodly life. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make his from those that have that mindset and that reach their station of a riba. He then says, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Qad asbuhu fi jinnatan wa amani, shakaru alladhi awla al-khala'iqa fadlahu lil-qalbi wal-aqwali wal-arkani. He says that they show gratitude to the one that gives, to the one that gives his bounties. He, uh, Allah Azza wa Jal, gives his the bounties and ni'am and favors to those that are grateful. And he says they are grateful to Allah Azza wa Jal with their hearts, tongues and limbs, the limbs of the body. So he mentions in these two lines three qualities on top of the ones we've already mentioned. And these three qualities are very important. Number one, he mentions al-riba, the highest level of gratitude. Al-riba means the person when you know that calamity befalls them or they're afflicted with something, they lose their family, they lose their wealth, they become sick. They verbally say Alhamdulillah and they use that, they see that as a ni'mah from Allah. Why? Because the affliction that has befallen them, it is from Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah Azza wa Jal is expiating their sins with that. He is cleaning them or cleansing their uh, deed, their bad deeds with that. The second level, which is lower, and it doesn't reach the level of contentment and riba, is shukr. Shukr is to, of course, be patient with that. Lakin, say alhamdulillah. You don't complain, you don't say, why did this happen to me? And so on. The lowest level is a sabr. You have to be a person, that, a person that has patience. So we have patience, which is the lowest level, and patience means habsun nafsi, ala ta'atillah, wa ala aqdarillah al mu'lima, wa ala al sabr ala ta'atillah, al sabr ala aqdarillah, al sabr ala an ma'asiyatillah. So sabr, patience is of three types being patient with the decree of Allah, that Allah Azza wa Jal had decreed this. He ordained it before you were even born. Accept it the way it is. Don't complain. And the Prophet Sallallahu mentions As-sabru inda sadmati al That patience is only considered to be patience when it first strikes and the person accepts it and they're patient with that. Second one is being patient from the muharramat, from the prohibitions. Okay? Habsun nafs. Restraining yourself and staying away from that Even though it's difficult Shaitan is telling you to do it Stay back Thinking about the consequences Not falling into that sin And the third one is what? The sabru huh? Sabru ala Aqdarillah uh, Correct Sabru an ma'asiyatillah Sabru ala ta'atillah Being patient with the obedience of Allah. It's not easy to wake up from Fajr. It's not easy to fast long days. It's not easy to give from your wealth. It's not easy to um, sit in a halaqa like this for two hours. So be impatient with that. These are the three types of patience. So these stations, patience, gratitude, and contentment, they vary in level. They differ. The lowest is sabr. Okay? You don't say anything that causes the anger of Allah, why is this happening to me, why am I the one only one suffering, why uh, have I been, you know, been picked out of thousands and millions of people. The second one is uh, a shukr. You do shukr to Allah that this happened to you for a reason and Allah could have done something worse to you but also see it as a ni'mah that Allah caused this to happen to you because he wanted to Expiate your sins from it Because the Prophet Sallallahu tells us that No believer is afflicted with a calamity Even being uh, Even being it Even it being A thorn that pricks His feet 
except that Allah Azza expiates their sins with that the sickness, the losing of wealth, losing of family, uh, the difficulties you go through, all of that, if you obviously uh, have that mindset, will, of course, what? It will be an expiation for your sins. The highest level of all is ar rida which is why the Shaykh started with it. نَزَلُوا بِمَنْزِلَةِ الْرِضَى فَهُمُوا بِهَا قَدْ أَصْبَحُوا فِي جِنَّةٍ وَأَمَانِ The manzilat al-rida, contentment, not uh, you know complaining, uh, thanking Allah for that, uh, instead of uh, you know wailing and shouting, you say Alhamdulillah. That leads you to do more worship, to worship Allah Azza wa Jal, to draw closer to Allah, to see this as a ni'mah, the affliction or the calamity that has befallen you. You see it as a ni'mah, and that's not a a level that many people can reach. It's very difficult to reach that level. Why? Because we're prone, we're very vulnerable as human beings. Whenever something happens, be it minor or major, we worry and we think, uh, subhanAllah, what's, gonna, what's the outcome going to be? How am I going to recover from this? Uh, how will I live my life? Uh, lakin, the believers are those that see this as a ni'mah. The real believers, the sahaba, the tabi'een, the prophets. And Allah Azza wa Jalla tested the prophets more than anyone else. أشد الناس بلاء الأنبياء ثم الصالحون ثم الأمثل فالأمثل. Those that faced the most difficulties were the prophets, even though the level was Subhanallah very high. They had a very high station in the sight of Allah. Allah tested them. So if Allah is not testing you, obviously that does not mean He does not love you. Like in this can be seen as a stidraj. This is how the Salaf saw a stidraj. That Allah Azza wa Jal is allowing me to commit these sins and he's not uh, taking it into account and he's waiting for a time and then when he seizes me this, the punishment is going to be severe this is how we see it because Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran that وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ اللَّهَ غَافِلًا عَمَّا يَعْمَلُ الظَّالِمُونَ إِنَّمَا يُؤَخِّرُهُمْ لِلْمُنْ تَشْخَصْ فِيهِ الْأَبْصَارِ The person who oppresses others Allah Azza wa Jal is aware of them do not think that Allah is heedless of this person Allah is waiting, giving them respite, giving them time to repent. Like in the moment he seizes them, his uh, punishment will be severe. And that person will be in a very difficult position to come back from that. And no trouble will be accepted at that time. And the Prophet ﷺ clarifies that in hadith. In Allah liyumli lidhalimi hatta idha akhadahu lam yuflitu. Allah Azawajal gives time you know, extends the the time they commit these sins until this person thinks that Allah had forgotten about him. Like in when Allah seizes that person and the punishment comes, it will be very severe. Inshallah ta'ala, we'll stop here and carry on from there. It's a little bit late. We will start from line 11 and finish off in the next session.